everyone, and welcome to today's Amicus Attorney Free Training Thursday. I have our trainer, Darren Juby, here with me today, and he'll be taking us through document assembly basics. As always, if you have any questions, please put them in the question box to your right side, and we will get to them at the end if we have time. Without further ado, I'll turn it over to Darren, and he can take it, us through the presentation. Thanks, Amanda. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's Abacus Next Free Training Thursday's webinar. This week, we're going to be focusing on the basics of, doc, of the document assembly feature within Amicus Attorney. My name is Darren Tuby. I'm a senior, pro, or senior training specialist here at Abacus Next, and my focus is the Amicus Attorney product line. As always, if anyone has any questions during our session today, like Amanda mentioned, please utilize the questions field here in GoToMeeting. And time permitting, we will get to answering them towards the end of our session. And if not, please do include your email address with your questions, and we'll be happy to follow up accordingly afterwards to provide you with the information that you are seeking. So now, without further ado, let's begin discussing the basics of document assembly here in Amicus Attorney. So just a quick agenda of what we're going to be covering in today's 30-minute session. We're going to talk about what is document assembly. We'll talk about some firm settings and some preferences that, that will affect document assembly. We'll go through generating a document. We'll go through creating a new document template, editing an existing one. We'll talk, about, we'll talk briefly about custom fields on your templates. We'll talk about how to delete a document template. And I will give you guys a couple additional tips here as well, if I can. And of course, at the end, time permitting, we will get to any of your questions. So without further ado, the first thing I want to talk about briefly is just what is document assembly? Well, in a nutshell, it automates your document production. It's very similar to a mail merge. Amicus utilizes a template that contains merge fields to pull information from the Amicus database and merge it into a finished document. Amicus Document Assembly works with Microsoft Word, Corel Word Perfect, and Hotdocs. For the purposes of today's webinar, we're going to be focusing on Microsoft Word, and in this case, uh, I will be using Word 2016. So you guys should be seeing my screen here right now. The first area that I want to focus upon is the, uh, the first area of importance, I would say, when it comes to document assembly is in the firm settings. So as an administrator, along the left-hand side in Amicus Attorney, I will have firm settings available to me here. So I will click on that. And of course, firm settings are only available to the administrators within Amicus Attorney. So those of you that are not an administrator, don't worry that you're not seeing that. Your administrator will know uh, where to go and do this. And if not, we do have help documentation uh, to, to point them in the correct directions as well. So we've logged into Amicus as an administrator and we've navigated to firm settings. So under documents here, you will see that management is an option for me to click on. So I'm going to just briefly open that up and you will see that we've brought up the firm settings documents location dialog here. And you will note that there is a document templates path here. The document templates must be accessible from a shared location and we are to specify their location relative to the Amicus server. Now we do recommend a UNC path is used here. Uh, so as you can see, there is the two slashes, my server name, slash document assembly templates. This is a folder that is created at the time of installation of Amicus Attorney, and it is shared out at that time as well with the appropriate rights on it. So I'm just gonna simply click OK on that. Now as well, if we wanted to point it to a different location, we could click the browse button here and do so very easily. Now I'm not going to do that in this case. This is the default folder that I want it to be pointing to. So I'm going to leave it as is, and I'm simply going to say OK to save those changes. So we've talked about the firm settings. So now let's move along to the preferences. Now, something to note, while firm settings apply to all users in Amicus Attorney, the preferences must be configured for and by each individual user. So some precursors to this portion of our webinar as well before I get rolling here. Users must have a supported version of Microsoft Word or Corel Word Perfect. If you're unsure as to whether or not your version is supported, please refer to the hardware and software requirements for Amicus Attorney, which can be found on the Technical Resources Guides section of our website at abacusnext.com slash amicus hyphen attorney hyphen technical hyphen resource hyphen guides hyphen updates. 
I'll pull that website up at the end of our session here today just so you guys can see that URL uh, a little easier. And as well, just an added note here, click to run versions of Microsoft Word are not supported. And please note that it must be a 32-bit version of Microsoft Word or Microsoft Office that you are using. 64-bit versions are not supported. So before we begin this next phase, we should always ensure that Word or WordPerfect has been closed prior to proceeding. As you can see on my taskbar down here at the bottom, I do not have Microsoft Word open. So now that that's out of the way, we log into Amicus and we navigate to Preferences as we have done so here. Under Documents, we would select Document Assembly. So I'm just going to move that over so you guys to make sure you guys can see it all here. So the first step here is to, is to select our default generation method. Our choices are as follows. We've got MS Word Mail Merge, WordPerfect Merge, Hot Docs with Microsoft Word, Hot Docs with WordPerfect, or hot docs form. If when you guys see the form here, that means using an actual form template in hot docs, which could be a PDF template or simply a form template. That is what the hot docs uh, templates themselves are referred to in some cases. So this setting here that we just set, and you'll see that I've got mine set as MS Word Mail Merge. This setting determines which format any new templates will be created within. Now note, if you have both Word and WordPerfect installed, you can generate either type of template as long as the configuration has been completed. Now, for the purposes of our webinar, like I said, I'm going to select the MS Word Mail Merge. So the second step is to install the Merge toolbar. Now, I've taken the liberty of uninstalling both of mine just so you guys can see the process here. It is fairly quick. Uh, so you will see here in step two, I've got the Install the Amicus Merge toolbar, and you will see that it is showing me an Install button. So if I click on it like so, you will see that the Amicus Merge Toolbar installer is coming up here. And really all I have to do here is click Next, click Install, And any moment here, it should complete. And there's our progress bar, as you can see, and the installation of the Amicus Merge toolbar is completed. So we will click Finish on there. Now the third step is to confirm the paths to Word, WordPerfect, Hot Docs, and Adobe Acrobat Reader, if those are all applicable. So in this case, I'm going to be focusing on the Microsoft Word one here. As you can see, it does have my path in here. And if I click on Browse, I am using Office version 2016. So as you can see on my local disk C, it is in the program files x86 folder, meaning that it is indeed a 32-bit application. In the Microsoft Office folder, we have an Office 16 folder. So as I scroll down the list here within the Office 16 folder, you will see that there is winword.exe. That is the executable for Microsoft Word. I've selected that. I can either double click or click on the open button here. And as you can see, it has populated my path, now telling Amicus Attorney where to find Microsoft Word on my system. So next thing I will do is install the Tasks toolbar. And to do that, I will click on this button right here. It shouldn't be showing me Remove at this point because it has been removed. So I do apologize for that. It should be showing Install there. And as you can see, I get this setup wizard up here for the Tasks toolbar. I will click Next. I'll leave that as everyone and I will click Next, and I'll click Next again. This one is much quicker than the Merge Toolbar installation, as you'll see, and voila, that is now installed. So I will click Close on that. And as well, down here at the bottom, the fourth and final step is to confirm that the document templates path is indeed correct. So you'll remember from the firm settings, we made sure that that was pointed in the right uh, direction. And as you can see, that setting has been inherited and shows here in my preferences as well. If for whatever reason it wasn't showing correctly, I could easily click on the Browse button, go to the network, find my server name, as you see here, 
and select the document assembly templates folder, as is done here, and click OK. And that would point me to that correct path. So I'm going to say OK on this window to save these changes. And so that is the preferences side of things of making sure that we're set up for document assembly. We've checked off the installation of the merge toolbar and the tasks toolbar. We've made sure that it is set correctly for us and Amicus now knows where we can find Microsoft Word. So now that we've covered all of that, let's talk about generating a document. So we'll begin by generating a simple letter to one of our clients. So we're going to navigate over to the people module here. And you'll see down in the navigation panel, I've selected people. I could have easily went to the Go menu and done the same thing, or I could have went to my system tray down here, right-clicked on the Amicus Attorney icon, and I could have selected people from there. Either which way I get here, I am now in the People module. So I'm going to select my client, and there are now multiple ways that I can go about generating a, a document from this point. They are as follows. I've selected my contact. I could go up to the Actions menu and select Generate a Document. I could hit Control D on my keyboard. I could right click and select Generate Document. Or I can click on this button right here, Generate Document. So I'm going to do the most straightforward and visible way of doing that. And I'm going to click on the Generate Document button here. And so now let's select the template. In this case, we'll select blank letter word. So if I go over here and look at my letters grouping, I will select the blank letter word template. I could double click on that or I can hit OK here. And it's going to ask me to select the file. I will select this one here. Say OK. And so as you can see, Microsoft Word is opening up. The template is going to open, and then the data will be merged into a finished document, as we are about to see here. And so as you can see, there is our generated document. There is our firm name right there. If I had a phone number and fax number in my firm details, then that would be included here as well. Of course, uh, I wasn't thinking ahead, and I don't have that information in there currently. But as you can see, there's today's date. There's our file number. So there's our client ID and the matter ID for that particular file that I selected, Costanza versus Vandalay Industries. There's my contact information. And here, I can actually type in to this letter if I wanted to and make some, <laughs> excuse me, make some edits to it. And you will also notice that Amicus has prompted me here with what I want to do with this document. I'm presented with the following options. I could save it as a document and associate it to an Amicus file. I can save it as a document and add it to Amicus as a library page. I could save it as a document but not associate it to a file or a library page. Or I could simply not save and not associate it. And like I said earlier, if you want to modify the document, simply move that prompt, make your edits and then you're ready to go. Note that any changes that we are making at this point are to the finished document, not the template. So what I could do here now is just to demonstrate what, how this all works is let's select the option to save it and add it to our file as a document. So I'm gonna say okay on that. And as you can see, it's prompting me as to where I wanna save it. So I'm just gonna stay, stay, put it here and we'll just put Costanza letter and I will say save and so as you can see the document details dialog has opened up has the same title as the file name itself but I could change that and I'll simply just make it cleaner and I'll put a space in there and as we can see here as well if I look, click on Files and People, there's the file it's associated to, there's the contact that it's associated to. So without going into too much detail on this uh, to make sure that we cover everything in our time, I'm going to simply say OK on that.
And so what I'll do now is I will close this document, and I am using Amicus Manage Mode for my document, so to not get too far off topic, but that is why I'm being prompted here with this document is currently checked out. Do I wish to check it in? I will say yes. And then close Word. And let's just quickly go over to the file so I can show you that document. I'll open up Costanza versus Vandalay Industries. And if I was to navigate to the documents, Brad, and look at our documents, there's the letter that I just associated to this particular file. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that is just how easy it is to generate a document and associate it to a file. So, the next logical thing we're going to talk about, now that we've covered generating a document, is creating a new document template. So I'm going to just save and close on that file, and I'm going to go back out to the Office module. And just a little bit of a preamble here, every firm member has the ability to create and modify templates unless, and I stress the word unless, they have been restricted from doing so by the security profile applied to them. If you find yourself unable to do this, please speak with your Amicus administrator to discuss and resolve further. So to begin with, we're out here in the Office module, and I'm going to click on Merge Templates up here in the upper left. In doing so, I now have the list of document template groups available to me here. And what I want you guys to think about when you look at this list is think about these groupings as file folders for your templates. So for instance, we've got memo templates, we've got litigation templates, we've got letters, file reports, and so forth. So we really just kind of, kind of tried to group them all together here to make it nice and straightforward. And so the first thing I want to do is let's start by creating a new template group. So let's do so by clicking on the new group button here, and we'll just call this training for the purposes of our session here. So as you can see, I just created that. I hit enter after I finished typing in the title. So there now is my training group. So I've clicked on the group that we just created. And now what I want to do is create a new template. And the reason that I've selected this group beforehand is because I want the template we're about to create to be saved and stored within this group. So I've now selected that, and I'm going to click on the New Template button. So you'll see the first thing I'm prompted to do is enter a template name. So I will say OK on that. And we will call this test1. And you will see that it is actually putting it in that template group that we just created. And if I wanted to change that, I could very easily do so by selecting this dropdown and selecting the folder or the group that I want this template associated with. Once I've done this, I can also dictate whether I want this template to be used for generating a document or an email. I could do both. For the purposes of our webinar today, I'm going to leave it as just a document. And next, we would determine who has access to the template. We can give access to everyone, which would be all firm members, or only selected firm members, which would be the following firm members. And then I would click on the people icon here, and I would make my selection accordingly. I'm just going to cancel on that and put that back to there. You may want to restrict the template to yourself while you're creating and testing it, and then come back here and give access to everyone afterwards, which you could easily do simply by coming back to this template and changing these settings right here. We can also create a template based upon an existing one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cancel on this for a moment, and I'm going to go into letters here, and let's take this guy, and I want to create a new template based on that. So you'll see the very easy way of doing so is I've selected the template, and I'm going to click on New. And as you can see, do I wish to create the template based on the selected one? Yes. So I will say yes to that and bring up this dialog. And again, it's going to ask me for a template name. So again, we will give it a name here. And I'm going to put it in that group we just created. So as you can see, the only real difference here is this time I had to select the group, and it knows that it's creating the template based on that existing one. So instead of having a blank template, I'm going to have some stuff already on here. Um, so what I can do now is I can click on the Create Template button.
So this opens Microsoft Word, and if it was a blank template, it would open us up with a blank template, or in this case, because I've created one based upon an existing template, it's going to open up and already have some fields on here, as you can see. So inside this template, we, have, we can have a mixture of text and quote-unquote variables. Variables are placeholders that represent data from the Amicus database. An example of a variable would be the short file name or the full fo uh, file full matter name, for instance, the contact's first name or their address. And when we generate a document using this template, the variables are replaced by the actual data from our Amicus database. So if I wanted to insert another variable here, I'm just going to give you guys an example of how I would do so. Let me just place my cursor where I want it. I'm going to put it right there. And we would go to the add-ins ribbon up here. And you will see this red A with some brackets around it. This is the select amicus field button. So I'm going to click on this. And as you can see, I then click on this drop down as the amicus variables are organized into a series of categories. As you see here, we've got people basic information, people address, and so forth. Now to insert a field variable, I would, I've placed my cursor where I want it to be, and then I select it from the list. So let's see, I'm going to grab file basic information, and let's put, I'm just gonna put the short file name in there as an example. And we'll say insert, and I will say close. So as you can see, I have now added that variable into this document. So when I generate this document, the short file name will appear here. Now, once I've completed this, I can always reformat the text as well. So any existing text, for instance, I could simply highlight, and if I go to the home button here, I could make it bold or italic or not. I can change the size of it, as you can see, and so forth. Now, as well, uh, I'll briefly touch upon this now. If we wanted to add any custom fields to our templates, we could easily do so. So let me go back to the add-ins again. And this time, if I'm looking for any custom records off of our... So, so to add any custom fields that we've created on our contacts, we would select those from the People Custom Information category that you see here. To add any custom fields that we have created for our files, we would select from the File Custom Information category, which is here. And as you can see, I do not have any uh, custom fields on mine. Therefore, that is why we're seeing this. As we can see here as well, if I select File, then I'd have to select File Type. And as you can see, there are some custom fields for e-billing. Um, same holds too for litigation. And if I had created custom fields of my own, then that would be there as well. So I'm just going to say close on that. I just wanted to show you guys how that was done. And so if I was satisfied with my template as it is right now, all I have to do is click on the Save button. We do not want to do a Save As or give this document a name, as Amicus Attorney has already done all of that for us. That was part of the initial process that we have done. So we've saved our template. Let's close this. And let's just close out of here. Actually, let me just go back here very quickly. And as you can see, there's the training group, and there's that training template that we just created. So let's just generate a document very quickly using this template. So again, let me go to the, I'll go to the files module this time. We'll stick with Stanza versus Vandalay. I'll click on the generate a document button. Let's select our training template and click OK. And as you can see, there is the generated document from that new template we just created. And of course, there's that short file name that I had added there. Not a great demonstration, but I wanted to make it simple, straightforward, uh, just so you guys could see uh, the difference between the one we had originally generated versus the one now. So I'm going to cancel that. I don't want to save that document. We'll just skip out of there. And so that uh, is how we create a document template, either brand new from scratch or based upon an existing one. So the next thing I want to just briefly touch upon is editing a document template. So again, we would go to the Merge Templates here in the Office module. I would select the template, as you can see here, and I would click on the Edit button. 
So you remember earlier I was saying that while you're creating um, anything along the lines of a, a template and so forth, and you, while you're creating it and testing it, you might want to restrict it so nobody else is utilizing it while you're testing it and making sure it's all good. Once you've done so, you can simply come back here and change that setting to all firm members as an example and then say OK on that. And as well, if we wanted to edit the template itself, you'll see we've got the Edit Template button down here. If I click on that, you'll see that it opens up in Microsoft Word for me. And I can then, therefore, go ahead and edit the template. Um, just bear with me while that opens up here. And again, I could simply go to Add-ins, click on my Select Amicus fields, and I could start adding some more variables in there if I so choose to do so. So again, let me just close out of that. And if I wanted to delete a document template, so for whatever the reason being, I found that ah, this template I've created, I could probably do a better job, or it's just not as useful as I thought it would be, or we already have something that does the same thing pretty much. Whatever the case may be, it's very easy to do so. We would simply come into Merge Templates here. I've got my Template Management dialog open. And if I select the template, you'll see I can simply click on the Delete button. And you'll see I get this prompt. This will delete the template from the list in Amicus Attorney. I may also opt to permanently delete the template file from its shared location. So you will see that I do have to check that box to make sure that I do that. And I'm going to say OK. And just like that, you will see that that is now gone. And if I wanted to get rid of the group, same thing. I've selected the group here. There are no templates underneath it. So I'm just going to click Delete. And again, there's nothing in there to worry about. So I'm just going to say OK. And that's as simple as it is. Now, there was one additional tip that I wanted to show you guys. And I see we're almost nearing the half hour mark. So I want to get this in here as quick as I possibly can. But did you all know that you can configure an event, an appointment or a to-do, to generate a document for you using the Do button? For those of you that weren't aware of it, I'm going to just show you very quickly how to do so. So let's create a new to-do. I'm just going to go to my calendar module here. I'm going to right-click over here and select New. And voila, I'm creating a new to-do. And what I'm going to do is go to Assistant Setup over here. And you'll see from this drop-down menu, I can select assistance type. So I'm going to select create document. And then you'll see I get this nice little selection down here for document template, select the template. So if I click on that, let's just select that good old trusty blank letter word and say OK. And let me just title this. So we'll call this webinar to do. And I'm going to say OK on that. I already had one created here as well, so I'm going to use that as a better example because I forgot to assign a file on there. So let me just open up this particular to-do. I had already created it, like I said. There you'll see it's associated to my file. It's associated to my contact. And if we look at Assistant Setup, it's already got that same setup. So watch what happens when I click the Do button. And there you go. So I just created a to-do that allows me, by clicking on that Do button, to generate a document. You'll see it timed it all for me, so I could easily create a time entry from here as well. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, that really doesn't lean uh, towards what we're talking about here. But again, Amicus Attorney is always covering our back and making sure that we're going to be able to record time for everything, whether we think about it or not. It'll remind us. And that was a good example. So I'm just going to not save this document. And that is how we can create a to-do or an event of any type with the Do button so that it generates that document for us. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is a very quick, uh, very high-level overview of Document Assembly Basics within Amicus Attorney. I did see a couple of questions here, so I'll try to get to answering those uh, as quickly as I can. 
Uh, Gracie, your question, can everyone associated with a particular file see the documents associated with that file? That would be a yes. If you're assigned to that file, any records that are assigned to that file, you're going to be able to see those as well. That includes documents. Uh, William, I see your question. Um, is the Costanza versus Vandalay related to the rubber bladder? You know it. <laughs> I'm a very big lover of Mr. Costanza and all of his misadventures. Um, now as well, I see David has a question here. Am I restricted in where I can save my documents that are linked to Amicus files? I have all of my documents saved to an X drive that it so that it syncs with my other computers. Now, David, I'm, when you mention X drive, I'm just wondering if you're an APC or not, but basically it wouldn't matter um, if you're an APC or in your own controlled environment. If you've got an X drive and it's shared out so that everybody can see that and everybody points to it as an X drive, so if it's mapped as such on all of their workstations, that would be the one caveat I could think of that might cause you grief. If you know, on one workstation it was the T drive, the other it was the V drive or the, the Z drive or whatever. Make sure it's the X drive on everybody's workstation and your preferences make sure it points using the X drive and there should be no issues from that uh, side of things. You should have uh, access for everybody to see that. And if not, what I would recommend is to uh, reach out to our technical support guys and they would be able to take a look at that for you and determine what's going on and, and how to get that uh, resolved. Uh, David, to answer your question, um, we'd have to get into using different merge fields, so you wouldn't be able to necessarily use the primary contact, for instance. Um, there would probably be a way if you tried uh, utilizing custom fields, for instance. Uh, I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. That's a hard question to answer in a short time frame. Um, but basically, just thinking off the top of my head, if you were to have a setup where... Um, you had some custom fields on a on a file, for instance, maybe as a, a second witness or a second uh, plaintiff or whatever the case may be, then you could probably put that field in the document template so that in some places it's referring to the primary client, but in other places it might be referring to a different field. You would have had to manually input that information in that field on the file, though. Uh, again, that might be a question that you'd be best uh, suited to speak to somebody in our technical support uh, department about, and they'd be able to give you a, uh, a better way of looking at that. Uh, can these webinars be made available for subsequent viewing? Dominic, to answer your question, yes, they will be available on our website, and if Amanda's listening, she might be able to give us a little bit more info on that. Uh, I'm just looking at the time here, so if she's got any closing comments to make, I'm just going to finish up here and then allow her to do so. Um, so I apologize for not being able to get to everybody's questions here. Um, the last one I see, do you, how do you use the email and templates? Uh, that's definitely not something I have enough time to go through, but uh, that is definitely something that is doable. Um, I apologize for not having time to go through that. Uh, okay. Um, but it does look like we've reached the end of our session for today. So thank you everyone for attending and participating in today's Abacus Next Free Training Thursdays, Amicus Attorney Document Assembly Basic Session. Next week, we hope to see you all here for our session on the Amicus Attorney Client Portal. Uh, again, thank you all for attending and have a wonderful rest of your day and week. And Amanda, if you've got anything to add, uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, just one last question before I finish up here. Uh, Kelly, I see what's the best way to create a template from an existing Word document that's already formatted with the letterhead. Um, what I would suggest is create a brand new template the way I showed you, um, but not off an existing template, just create it a blank template and then copy the contents of that existing document, paste them onto your template, and then start adding your merge fields. That would be my best suggestion to you. That way you're not uh, potentially contaminating or using a file that may not work out so well. Go that route, and I think you'll be best served. Uh, okay, everybody, again, thank you all for attending. Amanda, if you've got any closing comments, by all means, please uh, jump in, and have a wonderful rest of the day and week, everybody. Thank you, Darren. Uh, my only closing comment would be if we didn't get to your question. Uh, Darren, I can send those questions to you in an email document with the email addresses. And um, if you want to respond by email, we can get those answers out to you. Other than that, thank you to Darren and thank you to everyone who attended today. Have a great rest of your week.